I'm going to discuss the seven physical signs that may indicate your heart isn't working at its best right now. Globally, cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death. One person dies every 33 seconds in the United States from cardiovascular disease. About 695,000 people in the United States died from heart disease in 2021. That's one in every five deaths. Heart disease costs the United States about $239.9 billion each year from 2018 to 2019. This includes the cost of healthcare services, medicines, and lost productivity due to death. I will discuss the seven telltale signs of an underlying cardiac condition that you should be aware of. Stay tuned until the very end. I'm sure there will be a lot of information you've never heard before. This will be a very exhaustive video. But first, kindly hit the like button on the video, as this will increase its distribution on YouTube to those who are unable to access medical care or hospitals. Let's get started. Which seven symptoms should you be on the lookout for in case you have a heart issue? First sign. There may be a small indication in the ear that points to a heart artery obstruction. In the 1970s, Dr. Sanders Frank observed that a diagonal crease appeared in the ears of many of his patients who were experiencing chest pain from angina. This was dubbed Frank's sign by him. How do the ear and the heart relate to each other? According to one theory, this crease in the ear can also be caused by the same factors that harm the inner lining of the arteries. Therefore, does everyone who has the Frank sign have a blockage? No. 30 of the 100 individuals with this diagonal crease in their ears have nothing. It's just an indication of aging. The younger the person, the more likely it is to be a sign of a coronary or carotid blockage. Therefore, we need to pay closer attention to a 40-year-old with a Frank sign than to an 80-year-old who is likely just elderly and whose sensitivity is low. Put another way, only 40 out of 100 individuals with heart blockages will exhibit this symptom, so you can't rejoice if your ear is smooth. Hair loss on the legs is the second indicator. Because atherosclerosis is a diffuse rather than a localized disease, hair loss that appears first on the shin bones and then on the thumb, thighs, and legs may indicate that you have peripheral arterial disease or clogged arteries in the legs. You might also have blockages in other arteries, such as the coronary arteries that feed blood to your heart, if you have a blockage in your legs. The majority of patients with peripheral arterial disease do not become aware of their condition until their atherosclerosis has advanced and they start to lose hair. For hair follicles to grow, they require nutrients. If fatty plaque clogs your arteries, you won't get enough blood or oxygen. People may also experience reduced nail growth, smoother, shiny skin, and cold skin in addition to losing hair on their legs. Let me stress, however, that there are other causes of leg hair loss besides peripheral arterial disease. For example, genetics can play a role, and you can also lose hair from rubbing against your pants. Xanthalasma is the third sign. It's possible that when you examine someone's eyes, you saw a yellow plaque on the upper eyelid. Xanthalasma is the term for this condition, which is usually just a slow-growing cosmetic issue and doesn't hurt. The most prevalent kind of xanthoma, which is a cholesterol buildup in the skin, is xanthalasma. It mostly affects women in their middle years and is situated on the upper lid of the inner corner of the eye. Roughly half of the patients with xanthalasma have high triglycerides, high cholesterol, or dyslipidemia. Remarkably, xanthalasma affects just 1% of persons with high cholesterol. However, studies have shown that xanthalasma raises the risk of heart disease, heart attack, and stroke. Therefore, blood testing is necessary to determine whether you have high cholesterol or triglycerides if you have xanthalasma. Fourth indicator, Arcus senilis. This is age-related, as the name implies, and it affects older patients more frequently. It appears white or gray and is visible above or below the outer part of the cornea. It is caused by cholesterol deposits on the cornea's periphery. This shadow may completely cover the iris, the colored portion of the eye, in certain individuals. The individual might observe that their once dark eye is becoming lighter. There is a catch. Senilis arc does not impair vision and does not need to be treated. Before the age of 45, 
Arcosilus in younger individuals may indicate severe dyslipidemia or extremely high triglyceride and cholesterol levels. In this instance, it is linked to a higher risk of heart disease. If you are elderly and have a senile bow, this is normal. Approximately 60% of individuals over 60 and nearly 100% of those over 80 have it. Therefore, if you see a senile arch in the mirror and you're over 60, don't worry. Cyanosis is the fifth sign. The purple or bluish coloring of the skin is called cyanosis. You may have turned purple because it's too cold outside, but it could also indicate that you have a heart or lung issue. When you're hot, cyanotic blue or purple patches on your skin may indicate that your body isn't getting enough red, oxygenated blood in that area. If the patient experiences dyspnea, it may be due to a clogged artery, pneumonia, emphysema, pulmonary embolism, or heart failure, which is a condition in which the heart is unable to pump enough oxygen-rich blood. Of course, there are additional causes of heart problems, like congenital conditions like cyanosis causing tetralogy of fallopian tubes. Ulcers are the sixth indication. Unhealing leg or foot sores may be a sign of poor circulation or low blood pressure, brought on by an obstruction in the arteries supplying that region. Additionally, the person typically experiences cramps, soreness, and fatigue in their legs, making it difficult for them to walk quickly. Arterial ulcers typically appear on the outside of the leg, on the heels and toes, and they usually don't bleed. However, if you have nerve damage such as diabetic neuropathy, you may not feel any pain at all. Venous ulcers are another type of ulcer that are more common in patients with venous thrombosis or varicose veins. They typically bleed and manifest on the inside of the leg, unlike arterial ulcers. Swelling in the legs, ankles, and feet are the seventh symptoms. A weak or enlarged heart may be the cause of this swelling, or edema, in the legs and ankles, which can result in an accumulation of fluid in the body. Your ankle may feel as fluffy as freshly baked bread, your sneakers may feel tighter, and your shoes may not fit properly. And because gravity puts more pressure on your leg veins when you squeeze, you get that dimple and are more likely to notice swelling in your legs and ankles at the end of the day. Additionally, lying down and raising your legs helps to lessen swelling. If you've noticed any symptoms, or if you experience any of the above, see your doctor, tell him about it, and heed his advice. I really appreciate it if you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.